The winds of change continue to sweep across our great country as Canadians rise with one voice, demanding a brighter future and clamoring for immediate changes that would stop Trudeau's liberal administration from completely damaging everything we hold dear. Of course, as a proud Canadian, it's hard to accept that this beloved country is broken. But the harsh reality is that an overwhelming majority of Canadians believe that our nation is indeed broken and their anger is palpable. From coast to coast, people are frustrated with the state of our politics, the lack of progress on critical issues, and the general sense of unease that seems to have taken hold. According to Pierre Poilievre, Ev, leader of the Conservative Party, it feels like everything is wrong in our country right now. The statement made headlines and he has continued to use it. He repeated the sentiment, this time in French, at an address to his caucus last week. When a feeling is a catchy sparring point between party leaders and pundits, that's one thing. But when two-thirds of Canadians agree, that's a whole other ballgame. That Canadians are in a bad mood is hardly surprising, given the widespread belief that nothing is working well in the country. According to a recent national opinion poll led by Andrew Enns, executive vice president of the market research firm Leisure, 50% of Canadians are angry and 20% are very upset about how the Liberal government is handling the country. 67% of people polled said everything is broken, 30% of those who believe Canada is broken said they strongly agreed with the sentiment. In comparison, 38% said they somewhat agreed. For the 25% that disagreed with the sentiment, 19% said they somewhat disagreed, and 7% said they strongly disagreed. Although 41% of respondents reported feeling happy, only 4% claimed to be extremely pleased with their lives at the moment. 9% were indecisive. The constantly increasing cost of pretty much everything Canadians need to live, as well as the state of health care, are obvious examples of issues that directly affect the lives and well-being of the country's citizens. The Canadian government has publicly said that it is aware of and working to address the concerns of its citizens, but official answers typically center on analyzing the issue rather than resolving it. Perhaps the cause of the outcry is the government's actions. The results show that Canadians consider these issues very important, yet they do not believe that their government gives them sufficient attention. Cost increases, including inflation and interest rates, are cited by 68% of Canadians as their top economic concern. Comparatively, only 28% are confident that the federal government considers this a key priority. At the same time, healthcare is a major issue for 59% of Canadians, but only 25% believe it is where the federal government's focus lies. The numbers are a warning, Andrew Enns remarked while stating that in a government, regardless of what level, federal, provincial, or municipal, the general population is the customers. According to Enns, they all interact with the government in some form or fashion. These are their opinions and they're basically saying they don't like how business is running right now. Ems also said his team heard talk for months that our systems are seemingly falling apart. He saw examples of it too, with enormous waits for passports, frustrating airport delays, and fast-rising grocery prices. Apparently, if the poll captures the mood of the nation, then it translates into a lot of anger in a lot of places from a lot of people. About 50% of the population has an income of fewer than $40,000 gross or around $33,000 net. Given that the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is around $1,800 per month, simple math will indicate that a vast number of Canadians are in a hopeless situation. On top of the stagnating real incomes, the healthcare system is broken, public education is a joke, and even universities have become centers of indoctrination into the absurdly ridiculous world of the woke. As if that's not enough, it is scandal after scandal. Laws passed against the people's will, more carbon taxes that affect the cost of everything, and the ever-increasing public debt with no accountability. Then there are the ridiculous and unending climate change rules, the unwillingness to exploit and sell our oil to lower our debts, and the unending policies against the freedoms of law-abiding Canadians while the real criminals hardly get a slap on the wrist. Cities are increasingly populated by drug and alcohol addicts and homeless people. Consequently, we are less free, more prone to economic hardships, more disenfranchised and more divided. Yet the Trudeau government just looks on because this is all going exactly according to plan. Meanwhile, it would be interesting to know that Ottawa has spent $139 million in taxpayer money on COVID-19 campaigns since the pandemic began, according to a summary of advertising and media costs accumulated by the federal government. The federal government spent $4,494,710 on national COVID-19 advertising in 2019 and 2020. The total increased to $72,805,066 in 2020 to 2021 fiscal year. And from 2021 to 2022, advertising for COVID-19 saw a slight decrease in spending down to $62 million, 
$12,941. In total, Canadian taxpayers have been charged a total of 139 million. 312,717 taxpayers' dollars for media costs associated with COVID-19 as of this year. According to the latest reports, most of the budget went to more conventional forms of advertising including television and radio, while 47% went to online and mobile platforms. According to the most recent information available, funding was dispersed through a single private sector supplier chosen by Ottawa and referred to as the Agency of Record in Official Papers. According to a report from the Public Health Agency of Canada, media advertisement alone on COVID-19 was pegged at $61,779,631. That's right, $130 million, an unprecedented amount of money spent promoting COVID-19-related messages. But the recurring question is, what is the need for such a massive expenditure, especially when Canadians are struggling with other critical issues such as healthcare and education? And while the Liberals may argue that the spending is necessary, many Canadians are starting to ask, where is all this money going and who is benefiting from it? Of course, expect Justin Trudeau to come out with his typical line of, I get it, people are having trouble paying bills, the cost of living is high, and so is inflation. It sucks. Men Q. But we have the people's back during the pandemic. Justin Trudeau repeated the same typical Liberal script in the recent House of Commons session, where he was placed in a hot seat by Conservative Parliament member Melissa Lansman. Watch this. Eight years of this Prime Minister's out-of-control spending that even Liberals are starting to notice. Liberals like Bill Morneau, who said the federal government lost the agenda, and Mark Carney, who called inflation homegrown. These aren't just random Liberals, as the Prime Minister says. They were some of the Prime Minister's biggest defenders. They want to know, and Canadians want to know, when will this Prime Minister show some humility, admit responsibility, and end his reckless inflationary spending? <laughs> Speaker, Canadians remember well in the depths of the pandemic when uh, people pulled together. We stepped up to support people. We stepped up to support our neighbours. Frontline health workers stepped up uh, to support people. These are the things uh, that got Canada through this pandemic with a better record and fewer deaths uh, than just about uh, uh, any of our peer countries. There's uh, a lot of work to continue to do to support Canadians, and this government is unequivocally standing with Canadians uh, to support people who need that help uh, to create uh, better opportunities as we grow the economy for the future. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals can talk about the billions they spent all they want, but never in this country has so much money brought so few results. After eight years, the facts speak for themselves. The highest inflation in 40 years, the highest interest rates in a generation, the highest home prices ever. Mr. Speaker, a new poll suggests that 45 percent of Canadians with variable mortgage uh, rates will have to sell their homes in under nine months. They can say it, but Canadians know that everything's not okay. So I'll ask again, will he show some humility and admit responsibility? Wow. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are facing difficult times right now, which is why this government stepped up in the fall with direct support by doubling the GST uh, credit uh, for about 11 uh, million Canadians, uh, by moving forward with uh, dental supports and rental supports for Canadians who needed it, uh, two initiatives that the Conservatives actually voted against. Right. Mr. Speaker, while they are abandoning the middle class, we're going to continue investing and in being there for Canadians, not just because it's the right thing to do to support people who need it, because it's also the smart thing to do to keep our economy uh, growing strongly into the future. Never for once has Trudeau mentioned that billions of the spending went to the wrong people and businesses and the government sees no reason to reclaim those funds. We've not even spoken about the needless overspending on quarantine hotels. During the session of the House of Commons, while Trudeau was giving another of his startlingly embarrassing and infuriating performances, the Liberals seated behind him never smiled or enthusiastically nodded their heads as usual. They looked embarrassed and seemed like they all just realized their leader was a fraud. What we see here is a clear lack of transparency, with tens of millions of taxpayer dollars potentially going to well-connected advertising firms without any oversight or accountability. Clearly, Canada is in a better place today than it was eight years ago. This is a reality even fools can see. And Canadians have finally woken up to the fact that woke dogma kills countries. The nation is looking at Trudeau and saying, what have we done? And as the country prepares for the upcoming election, this issue of government spending will likely become a hot topic, with Canadians demanding answers and accountability. We hope that this video has shed some light on the current state of our nation and sparked a conversation about the issues that matter most to Canadians. Remember, your voice and opinions matter, 
So please share this video with your friends and family and let's know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more in-depth analysis and coverage of the most pressing issues facing our nation. Thanks for watching and see you in the next upload.